Amen. Open your Bibles in James chapter 5. And Pastor Aldo is teaching on prayer, and I'm going to continue on prayer because I believe God is calling us into that place where we understand that prayer is much more than just a place we run when we need, but it got to become a place of dependency. You know why we have so much difficulty praying? And you don't have difficulty praying, just me. Uh, it's because we don't want to depend on anybody else. So prayer becomes our last resource. How many can say amen? amen. Prayer becomes the last resource because we still try to do everything we can. And then when we see that we can't do anything, we run back to prayer. Most of us have become that exactly. And God is bringing us back into the place where prayer becomes our daily lives, daily dependence, daily supply. Amen? I don't know about you, but I cannot go one day without his presence. I cannot go one day without depending on him and him alone. How many can say amen? Amen. 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 I was, I was, I never do that. Believe me, I never go home and listen to my own message. I always think that my accent is too bad. And <laughs> so actually Wednesday, I love so much my message that I went and I heard twice. And, and if you didn't get the podcast, you should hear God, my provider. It was such a powerful message to my life. It became such a powerful thing that just woke me up for some of the great things that God still have to do in our lives. How many know that, you know, God did, did not finish with us yet? Amen. Come on, Conqueror Church. Amen. God did not finish with us yet. He still have a plan for us. And we're going to see what God has for us. But for our, in order to do that, we got to go back to that place of dependency. Or that place where we know that he is the source of everything that I need. That's why Paul could say, God, my provider. For I know that my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. So if you didn't hear that message, go back to the podcast. Now we have podcasts. <laughs> and we, and, and in, my, in my phone is right next to Joyce Myers and, <laughs> and Steve Furtick and Judith Smith and Joe Osteen. So it's like I feel kind of important now. <laughs> Amen. But as I was listening, God was, was speaking to me so much about prayer and how much as we begin to learn from him, we, we're going to learn much more and more that we, we need to go. If we want, how many of you want to see results in your life? Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to see a lot of things that I haven't seen yet. And in order to, do, to see that, we need to start praying. We need to go back to a life of prayer. So the name of this message is praying to get results. Amen. Amen. And we're going to talk about a specific kind of prayer that God called us to pray. So that's in James. You have James yet? Yes. James 5, chapter, uh, verse 13 through 18. I'm going to be reading from the New King James Bible. Uh, is anyone among you suffering? Let me ask. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him, oh, it didn't say somebody to pray for him, right? It says what? If you are suffering, let you pray. Oh, but pastor didn't pray for me. Oh, but uh, sister so-and-so didn't pray for me. Oh, but my mom didn't pray for me. Hello? <laughs> Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing songs. Is anyone among you sick? Lamb, let him call the elders <laughs> of this church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith, hello? And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another. We don't like that part. It's not good for our reputation. And pray for one another that you may be healed. 
The effective prayer of a righteous man avails much. Now, I love to focus on this part right now. The verse 17, it says, Elijah was a man with a nature like us. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. So tonight we're going to talk about the principles of the prayer of faith. Prayer that gets result. Prayer that see different things happen. And we're going to understand what exactly is that prayer of faith and how it works in our lives. Amen? When my oldest daughter was um, four years old, her name is Sarah, if you don't know her, um, I remember like it was yesterday. Uh, we were in my mom's house in New Jersey, and um, she came to me and said, I want to play outside, I want to play outside. They had a, a big backyard. So we, I'm like, okay, let's go. So we went to the door, and by the time we got to the door, I realized it was raining. It was pouring outside. And then she was so upset because she wanted, really wanted to go outside to play. And, and I stopped and said, honey, I'm so sorry, you're gonna have to play inside. And she said, no, no, mom, we just got to pray. <laughs> and like very, a very good person of faith, I say, okay, let's pray. So she went to the door, she put her hands on the screen, and she said, God, I want to play outside, stop the rain. Are you ready for this? And the rain stopped completely. And this is New Jersey. It's not like Florida, guys, that the rain just passed by and we know the cloud is going. No, no, this is Jersey. The rain over there, when it's raining, it's raining. And it's going to rain for a while. That's why I told her, we're going to stay inside and play inside. And, and I was just uh, speechless, stunned. I, I couldn't say a thing. I wasn't moving. She goes, come on, Mom, let's go. Because for her, that was just, you know, trusting, believing in God. It's going to do what I pray for. Hello. And we that should have that attitude when we pray. Hello, let me say it again. We that should have that attitude when we pray a surprise when it ha actually happens what we pray for. Come on, how many of you pray for something you were so, so shocked that God actually did it? Hello. We pray for it, and we are shocked when it actually happens. <laughs> so the Bible is talking about this kind of prayer that actually needs faith. That for us to see happen, prayer that changes things and situations and even nature obeys, we need to have that kind of prayer, the prayer of faith. The first principle of the prayer of faith is that prayer of faith does not depend on us. Hello? And it, we already read, and I'm, I want to read from the Amplified Bible in James 5.17 that says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And look what it says. With the same physical, mental, and spiritual limitations and shortcomings. That's us. And Elijah was just as we are. No difference. There was nothing so special about him. Hello? That make him so special that God would actually answer his prayer. The only thing that made him special was that he depended on God to do it. And that's what the kind of prayer of faith is. It does not depend on our ability to do something except believing when you pray. That's the only thing that he actually requires of you when you pray the prayer of faith. Is that you believe. How many of us are praying, praying, praying every day, but we actually don't believe what we're praying? We don't trust that God is able. We're just saying, 
a song, Nothing is Impossible with You. Yeah. Nothing is Impossible with You. You know, I was talking about Wednesday night, and I remember actually why I started talking about that. It's because when I was hearing me preaching, I, I actually realized that I say a lot of hello. Hello? <laughs> Anybody notice that? <laughs> I was like, why am I saying so much hello? I, just, I was like, I said it, something, and then I go, hello, hello. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, somebody answered that phone. <laughs> so if I do say a bunch of hellos tonight, <laughs> I will hear afterwards in the podcast and try to correct next time, okay? So I'm just apologizing for that. <laughs> Amen. The second... Uh, principle of the prayer of faith is that is a miracle like event it's not a daily thing it's an extraordinary event that's the results that we're going to get from a prayer of faith amen in first king 17 1 second part of the verse says as the lord the god of israel lives whom i serve this is elijah talking there will be neither do no rain in the next few years except at my word. So this is the prayer that brings exceptional and extraordinary results. Amen? It's that kind of prayer that Jesus stood up in the middle of the storm and said, peace, be still. And the moment he prayed, it was done. Same way Peter is walking to the temple, and he, uh, let me stop here because they already told me not to walk too much because of the camera, and I forgot that on Wednesday they actually had to jump out on the back to, to, for me to pay attention. They tried to put the words there, I couldn't see it. <laughs> so I'm just going to try, Vinny, my best, <laughs> not to move so much. But uh, when Peter is walking to the temple, it's the same kind of prayer. They ask, uh, the, the man that was crippled say he wanted money, but he said, I don't only, only have one thing, and this is what I do. And he, he commanded, he prayed the prayer of faith right there, and he said, rise up, take your bed, and walk. And what happened? He rose up, took his bed, and walked. Because that's the kind of results that we're going to get when we pray the prayer of faith. So here in this passage, Elijah is not only saying that it won't rain for the next few years, and then declaring it's going to rain when there is no rain for a while. So this is the kind of faith that he had for extraordinary things. He said it, he believed it, that God could do beyond his power, beyond his imagination. How many of us lost that kind of faith for a while? We haven't seen things happening and we start thinking God is not, he's done, he's finished. He's not going to do what he has promised. We got to go back to that place where we understand that God is still in the business of doing miracles. Amen. He's still doing miracles. Amen. How many can say amen? amen. God is still doing miracles. And he's still going to do miracles in my life and in your life. We just got to believe it. We just got to trust him. We just got to let him do what he wants to do in our lives. You know, me and Pastor Aldo, we went to a counselor this weekend. And it was such a blessing into our lives. And uh, one of the things that this counselor said to us that was so powerful in my life. I'm not going to say things that we went there, it's confidentiality, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, that counselor said one thing to us, he said, I don't believe God has given up on your calling. It was so powerful to hear that. And then she said, she looked at us and said, I believe God is going to make you to be the pastor he called you to be. And the funny thing was, she was just sitting there and she looked at us and said, I don't know if this is God speaking or not, but I got to say it. Because I feel 
you need to hear that. And we need to start going back and believing that. Yeah. That God is going to make us to be what he called us to be. We have to stop believing the lies that the enemy is bringing back again and again and again, saying that you know, don't matter, that God is not going to do what he has promised, that you're going to lose what you have. God, all these things that he's bringing into you, you're going to lose your house, that you're going to lose your marriage, that you, come on. We got to stop and say, this is not my God. That's not the kind of words that God would speak into my life. And we have to recognize that to be a lie and stop the lies of the enemy in our lives and declare the powerful truth of God's word in our lives. How many can say amen? Amen. Amen. And that's the third point. The prayer of faith is to ask God according to his word. What is the promise that God has made you? What is the promises that he has given to you in his word? Hello? It, has, it is to ask God to accomplish what he has promised. That's the kind of prayer that we need to be praying right now. Most of us now, I don't know about you, but me, I've been doing a lot, is that pity party prayer. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, God, I can't take it anymore. What else, Lord? Come on. <laughs> what kind of prayer is that? I understand sometimes we just got to go to God and tell him what is going on and how we feel. But that should not be the, our constant prayer life. It has to be, God, I'm trusting you. I know your word promised that my marriage is going to be restored. That my, my, I, I'm going to receive the promotion because you are the one who, who will provide for every need according to your riches in glory. And, and we start bringing back the word of God into our lives. And that's what the word of God is telling us about Elijah. God's promises are the only ground for our confidence in asking. So in order for me to ask with faith, I need to know what are his promises. Hello. Here we go. <laughs> it's not worked up from emotional life, but giving and supporting, supported by what God has said in his word. God told Elijah it's going to rain. In 1 Kings 18, 1, and it's so powerful, it says, After a long time, and that has been three years and a half, in the third year, the word of the Lord came to Elijah, Go and present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the land. Now, you've got to have faith to do that. It has not been raining for three years and a half. And the Lord tell Elijah, You go to the king, and you tell him, the rain is coming. Hello? The rain is coming. And you know what Elijah does? He obeys. Some of us, we need to start obeying what the Lord is saying. Hello? First Kings 18, 41 through 44 says, And now Elijah said to Ahab, Go eat and drink, for there is the sound of a heavy rain. Wow. When you hear the sound, you can go and tell Ahab. But he's saying that, guys, but there's no sound. The only thing he heard was God saying, it's going to rain. Hello? It's going to rain. But now he's here, and he's going to Ahab, and he's saying, go. There's the sound of a heavy rain. In verse 42, so Ahab went off to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed to the top of Carmel, bent down to the ground, and put his face between his knees. And in verse 43, and he said to his servants, go and look toward the sea. And he went up and looked, and, and he came back and said, there is nothing there. Huh. There's nothing there. Seven times Elijah said, go back. Can you imagine six times the servant comes running, and Elijah's like, the sound of the heavy rain. There's nothing. How many of you are in that place right now? You're sending the servant that he's coming back and say, there's nothing. 
I don't see anything. <laughs> Come on. Oh, there is nothing. And Elijah sent him six times. And the seventh time, he comes back. Oh, this is what he says. A cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. <laughs> Hello. He told Ahab there is a sound of a heavy rain. And all they could see was a small cloud. Hello. He was not based on what he saw. He was based on what the Lord told him. Some of us, we need to go back to trust and to put a foundation in what the Lord is saying and not what we are seeing. I don't know what you are seeing, but what the Lord says is greater, is more powerful. It's bigger than anything you can see right now. Every giant will fall. Every mountain be moved. Come on. That's the promise of his word. <laughs> That's the promise of his word. Amen? Amen? The fourth principle, the prayer of faith, is rooted in our confidence on God's word. What do you have been trusting on? What people are saying? What your circumstances is telling you? What you have been based your faith on. In Mark eleven twenty four, 24, the Amplified Bible says, For this reason I'm telling you, whatever things you ask for in prayer, in accordance with God's will, believe with confident trust that you have received them and they will be given to you. You see, faith accompanies the knowledge of God's word. Amen. In Romans 10, 17, we all know that, that verse. It says that faith comes by hearing. But hearing what? The word of God. You see, faith can only come when you stop to listen to the word of God. I don't know about you, but lately I've been listening and listening and listening and going back and going back to the word of God and going back to his promise, what he has for me. God is my refuge and my strength, a very present help in time of need. God is my provider. He will supply for every need according to his riches in glory. And we go back to hear the word of God and to have our foundation in the word of God. You cannot believe beyond your knowledge of God's word. No wonder we, we are not able to believe sometimes. It's because we don't have enough of the word in us. Because we'll be hearing too much the news. Come on guys, the news are not good. And I'm sad to tell you it's not going to get better. Jesus says that in the end we're going to hear rumors of war and, and persecution, and so many things that we're seeing right now, it's, it's predicted in the word. We pray for our nation, and we should do that tonight. We pray for, uh, uh, amen, for protection. We pray for things. But our, 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 our faith is not based on what we see. Because you see, even though the mountains shall be moved, I will not be moved. Amen. Everything can be shaken, and the Bible says everything will be shaken, but we will stand. We will stand secure because our trust and our faith is in the word of God. Amen. And what he has promised, he will do. He will guard me. He will protect me. Hello? Amen. He, will, he will tell his angels and put around me to protect me. That's, that's what his promises said. And that's what we need to stand on, church. Right now, we need to stand on the promises of God. Amen? Amen. You need to stand on that because God said there was going to rain. Elijah believed to the point of sending his servant to warn Ahab that the rain was coming. He wasn't afraid of saying because he knew that if God said it, he was going to do it. 
like Abraham said, that he was convinced that the one who made the promise was able to fulfill it. <laughs> How many of you are trusting and knowing that the one who made the promise is able to fulfill it? Hello. He wants to use us, but he doesn't depend on us. How many can say amen? amen? He doesn't depend on us. He wants to use us as a vessel in any situation, in any circumstance, in all the promise that he has given us. He wants to use his vessels, but he does not depend on us. He's going to do what he has promised because he's God and because he said so. Amen. I think we need to tell one another sometimes, you know. Why is God going to do it? Because he said so. <laughs> Amen. Because he said so. And because he said so, I believe it. I trust it. I know he's going to do it. Amen. Now, the prayer of faith requires action on our part. When he tells us to do something, we go and do it. Like Elijah, he said, go to Ahab. And what did Elijah do? He went to Ahab. You act like you got it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> like Elijah saying to Ahab at the sea, only a small cloud, like a hand. You know, in 1 Kings 18, 44, on the New Living Translation, I want to read the, the last part to you. Look what he says. Then Elijah shouted, hurry to Ahab and tell him, climb into a chariot and go back home. If you don't hurry, the rain will stop you. Guys, he just saw a cloud. <laughs> you know? Just a, a small cloud, just like this. And he said to his servant, go and tell Ahab to hurry. Because God is going to do it, what he has said. Hurry. Some of us, we need to start telling each other, hurry. <laughs> because God is going to do what he has promised. Come on, hurry. <laughs> That often all I see is a small cloud. I don't care. God said it's going to rain. Hurry. Hello. Would you turn to somebody and say, hurry. Because <laughs> the rain, it's going to stop you if you don't run. Hello. Woo. <laughs> so we got to put that faith into action. God said it. Then let's do what he said it. If he's going to do this, let, let's do what he said. Yes. Let's go. Let's continue. Let's go forward. Let's move. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen? And let God fulfill his promise through our lives. Amen. I want to be a part of what he's Amen. doing right now. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The next one is the prayer of faith involves speaking like it's done. That's our biggest problem. We talk too much, but we talk the wrong thing. Hello. Oh, now it was a very quiet sound in the church. <laughs> Come on, isn't that true? We talk too much sometimes, but we only say the wrong things. We complain, we murmur. I'm not pointing to you guys, I'm talking about myself here. We complain. My husband says, I said, honey, you're a complainer. I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> we complain about everything. It's too hot. It's too cold. I don't like this. Come on. But the prayer of faith involves speaking what we pray for like it's done. Elijah said to him, Hurry, the rain is here. There is a sound of a heavy rain. He was speaking. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. Hurry up. It's going to rain. It's like the story, I don't know if you ever heard of this village. <laughs> they are the, this small church, it's been a, a drought in the land. And this small church keeps praying and praying and praying for rain. And they did a special service that they declare. Tomorrow we're going to come to church and it's going to rain. And then one little girl comes to church and she said, aren't we praying for rain? And everybody, yeah. And she took her umbrella and said, where are your umbrella? 
Hello. If we believe it for rain, why are we not speaking <laughs> and acting yeah. like it's done? Yeah. How many of you are praying for rain? Rain. Yeah. rain in your crops financially. Rain in your marriage. Yeah. Come on. Rain in your work. Rain in your church. How many of you are praying for rain? Yeah. 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 Now I only see some of us are seeing nothing. Some are already seeing the small cloud. <laughs> but Elijah said, you know, God told me, and even before he saw anything, he said, there is a sound of a heavy rain coming. The rain is coming. Would you turn to somebody and say, the rain is coming. The rain is coming. Elijah heard. He believed. He acted. And he spoke. Are you speaking the word of God? Are you declaring what you've been praying, believing for? Are you declaring what God has promised you? We need to go back to that church to declare, to believe, to trust that God is going to do, that he's faithful, that he's able to do what he has promised. Amen? The next one is the prayer of faith doesn't allow double-mindedness. James 1, verse 6 through 8 says, But when you ask or when you pray, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. A person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Ooh. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Are you praying and believing Something for today and then tomorrow, you're speaking against it. Hello. Then you start doubting. Maybe the Lord is not going to do it. Double minded means a wavering, uncertain, doubting, divided interest mind. We got to be focused, single mind, not two minds. Not divided, trusting, knowing that he is able. Elijah believed, even when he still couldn't see it in the first six times, and even on the seventh, when it was still small, he continued to believe. Every single time of the six times that the servant came back and said, there's nothing. I imagine the first time he went running, came back, oh, there's nothing there. And then Elijah said, go back. <laughs> There's nothing there. Go again. Seven times. The servant probably was saying, either Elijah is crazy. <laughs> or this, his God is really powerful because to rain with nothing there? <laughs> Hello. But Elijah kept trusting. The Lord said it's going to rain. Go back. Go back. Go back. The prayer of faith will believe. We will speak. We will act against our lot. I was listening to Finnish. I was listening to Joe Austin. Today, I don't know if you heard his last message, powerful message. And uh, anchored, anchored by hope. And he was telling about, and I'm going to read so I don't say it wrong. He was talking about a young lady <clears throat> that he grew up with in his church. And he said that when he, she got married, she and her husband really wanted to have a baby. So they tried any possible way to see if she could get pregnant. And year after year went by and there was no success. So she, she was the head of their children's ministry and had them believing, have been believing for his baby for 20 years. Can you imagine that? It's the six times that <laughs> the servant kept going. There was nothing. There was nothing. <laughs> right? Hello. So one day they were in a meeting and she made a statement. I have a good assistant trained because when I have my baby, and this is 20 years, 20 something years later. 
Because when I have my baby, I'm going to be out for a little while, so I need somebody trained to do my job. So he was in the meeting. He was already pastoring the church now, because when she got married, his daddy was the pastor. She'd been trying for all this time, and now he's the pastor. So he's in the meeting. She announces that in the meeting. So when she leaves, she, he goes to his sister and says, Lisa, is she pregnant? Did I miss something? She goes, no, Joe, she's trusting God and believing. And he goes, oh. Mm -hmm. And he said that he started questioning her faith. Hello. He said that he thought to himself that she was, that that was crazy. Because she wasn't saying, if I have the baby. She was saying, when I have the baby. <laughs> 29 years later, she went to the doctor, and the doctor said, congratulations, you're pregnant. But not only one baby, you're having twins. <laughs> she kept trusting. She kept believing that God was able to do his promise. It reminds us of Abraham. <laughs> Everybody was probably saying, this old man is crazy. He thinks God is going to still give him a baby. <laughs> Come on. But the Bible says that he knew, that he was sure that the one who made the promise was able to fulfill it. Church, we need to go back to that place. If God made you a promise and you were praying that prayer of faith for your situation, don't let anybody pull you out of your faith. You know why? God didn't put the promise in them. He put the promise in you. Nobody's going to believe for your promise like you do. Because the promise, God gave it to you. So you need to learn to believe and trust God for the promise he made to you. You can have faith when people think it's far out. You can have faith when you, you don't see and it feels like the promise that the fulfillment is so far away. You still can walk in faith. You still can send your servant six, seven times. And even he comes back with the, with the, the answer that you don't want, <laughs> that you are not expecting. You still promise or you still believe in the promise that God has made you. So keep believing, keep speaking, keep acting on it. <laughs> Your promise is coming. So to just finish, and you remember, would you turn again to somebody and say, hurry up, the rain is coming. Come on, now turn to the other person and say, come on, hurry, hurry. The rain is coming. <laughs> Your rain is coming. What God has promised. He is going to fulfill it because he is able to do it and because he wants to do it or else he wouldn't promise. Amen? Would you stand to your feet right now and worship God?